and as usual we have gathered here to celebrate the beginning of a new academic year and to welcome new students, to congratulate class recipients and this time our Fulbright and Fulbright case recipients. Uh, and I will start with this. We have seven new students in the Center for Slavic and East European Studies. Katie Clark. Where is Katie? Right here. Welcome. Christopher Ford. David Kiel. Sofia Papadimos. Wait! <laughs> Colleen Rankin. Sarah Schwal and Leo Zhang. Ah. Ah. <laughs> and I'm going to mention our uh, class recipients. Actually, we awarded 10 graduate language fellowships this summer and three undergraduates for the first uh, year class administration in Washington allowed us to actually uh, award undergraduate classes and we will continue this in the next four years. Uh, this summer the, class, the graduate class recipients were Andrea Atkins, Daniel Davidson, Caitlin Lemons, Jeffrey Parker, Shannon Potter, Alison Riggs and Mark Sokolsky. And the undergraduates Joel Bailey, Jordan Peters and Timothy Srocka. Now for the next academic year, we have 12 graduate um, fellowships and again three undergraduates, uh, Mitch Engel, Andrea Atkins, Sarah Garrett, Lisa Goddard, Christine Hildenen, John Johnson, Caitlin Lemons, Shannon McAfee, Emma Pratt, Colleen Rankin, Alison Riggs, Sarah Schwom, and the undergraduates, Jene Fortier, Elizabeth Gribel and Ashley Johnson. Let's congratulate them. <laughs> we also have this year two of our incoming MA students are on university fellowships, and this is Christopher Ford and David Keel. And also for the first time, we have a real, uh, really big success with Fulbright and Fulbright case uh, recipients of, and students particularly. And these are uh, Oops. Yes, okay. Benjamin uh, Gatling Nelk. Near Eastern Languages and uh, Cultures, Matt Curtis, I mean some are going this year, others just returned, like Matt Curtis from the Slavic Department, Ian Lancelotti, History, Catalina Hunt, History, and Kristen Sil Silver, an undergraduate student uh, with a dual major in Psychology and Slavic. And again, congratulations to them. This year, however, we have a triple reason to celebrate, hence I'll talk three more minutes. Uh, and this is 2010 marks the 45th anniversary of the creation of the Center for Slavic and East European Studies at the Ohio State University, founded by Leon, Professor Leon Tworog. Uh, for all these 45 years, the Center has provided support for lesser and least commonly taught languages, area studies courses pertaining to our regions, has uh, offered various uh, outreach programs, and uh, of course organized exciting lectures, conferences, uh, and other events and programs. This year we will kick off the anniversary with lectures by exciting speakers. The first one coming is Sabrina Ramet, everybody who works in the Balkans 
knows her work. The second speaker will be coming from Moscow, Artyomi Truitsky, one of the most famous and, and popular these days uh, critic and scholar of Russian youth and rock music in Russia. So he will be talking at the Mission Center on the 25th of October. And we will end the October series with a presentation by Ohio Senator Sherrod Brown, who has actually an education in Russian and Slavic. And he is going to talk to us about the importance of, first, the US-Russia relationships and the importance of really area studies and language uh, training and, and learning. And of course, the quarter will um, end, and it's not of course, but it is uh, important, will end with an international Chekhov conference. And it is of course because it's another celebration, <laughs> and you will hear more about it uh, at the end in a few minutes. Next uh, two quarters, winter and spring, will continue our lecture series. And of course, this time again, of course, the Midwest Slavic conference which will be uh, held simultaneously with the Midwest History Russian Workshop and we will have Sheila Fats, uh, Patrick from University of Chicago to deliver the keynote address. Um, and last but certainly not least, after we dedicated last year on writing a new NRC, the National Resource Center, and FLAS proposal. This summer we received the news that the Slavic Center has been awarded two grants, one for the NRC and one for FLAS. So, <laughs> we are back in business for four more years. <laughs> On behalf of all working in the Center, I would like to express my gratitude to all of you present here today because I am convinced that you all contributed to this success uh, and I believe we will all benefit from it. More specifically, I would like to thank these colleagues who have been closely engaged with the proposal at various stages of its completion for their advice and assistance. Kristen Hamble from OSERF, Debbie Lewis, Evaluation, the, the School of Education, Mary Myers, University Marketing, Kalina Stefan, Rudy Blazer and Joanna Kukioka Blazer, Amy Carey from East Asian uh, Sen Studies Center, Janet Staki, Institute of Japanese Studies, Patricia Sieber, the Director of East uh, Asian Studies Center, our friends in the Middle Eastern Studies Center, Alam Payant and um, Melinda, and uh, Esther Gottlieb. Um, and uh, this sounds a bit like an Oscar speech, but uh, <laughs> thanking is really important. Since I still carry the aftertaste of writing the proposal, I will share with you a few numbers. The applications this year increased from 170 to 215, and this is for all areas. Um, and our particular competition also became um, more enhanced and competitive because they folded the inner Asian region within our uh, Slavic East European and Eurasian uh, centers and areas, so they actually, we re they received more applications. Uh, two centers of the previous cycle did not receive their grants, and that's Texas, Austin, and Columbia. Columbia received only the FLAS, but did not receive the NRC. Out of 127 grants given to all areas, we received the fourth largest grant. Right. And out of 127 plus awards, plus grants, we received the 15. Um, so although I was unaware of it, it appears we were rather ambitious with that proposal. <laughs> 
but the success actually speaks loudly about the quality and the strength of our programs and we should all be proud of this success. With this, however, comes a lot of responsibilities. Not only uh, we have to spend the money, right? And systematically pursue our objectives, but we have to record, analyze, and painstakingly uh, and report our outcomes. The Department of Education demands from us a comprehensive evaluation of our effectiveness. And we are being asked to report data from the last 10 years, and we will track class recipients for the next eight years. So I don't know whether there is another program which really is evaluated 18 years, 10 back and eight forward, but this is what we have to do and we'll do it. Um, again, your collaboration here is invaluable. You'll be asked to fill surveys, participate in focus groups, etc. And I thank you in advance. And uh, to conclude, my deepest gratitude for this work, for the, their work on the proposal, for being the best staff at OSU, and for making this reception possible goes to Lance, Marianne, Jordan, Katie, Kelly, and Becca. And of course, and adult beverages. Um, <laughs> I would like, uh, like to have my colleague Angela Riddlinger just to say a few words about the Czech conference. And again, welcome and thank you for coming.